Hi everyone, welcome back to my watercolour painting channel. Um, today I'm going to do a little painting, a little watercolour painting of Polpero in Cornwall. It's a Cornish fishing village. Now this is going to be quite a long painting um, and I want to get as much information as I can to show you guys exactly how I go about painting a watercolour like this. So it's going to be in two parts. So this will be marked part one and then part two will follow straight after. Okay, then we'll start by just misting the sky with my mister bottle, uh, just to sort of dampen the area slightly. Not too much. That's spraying out a bit, not too well at the moment. And then I'm just going to put the sky in, I'm using a bit of cerulean blue and a bit of cobalt blue. I'm just going to use the top of my brush to get a nice broken cloud effect, something like that. And now I'm going to bring the blue in quite solid at the top. It's getting that nice broken edge you want for the clouds. Then I'm going to pick up a little bit of magenta. I want it too pink. And just bring that in from the side. I don't mind going over the roofs of the houses slightly. Now I just want to break up some of those edges on the top of the clouds just so they look a bit more natural. I'm just using the brush on it's just quite not a lot of paint on it, quite dry. Then I'm going to get a bit of warmer colour, which is a bit of Naples yellow in the magenta, just to add some interest. The same at the top there. And at the bottom, and then a bit more blue, bluey grey colour. Just some distant van mass, I can paint over that because it will be slightly bluer in the distance. But I'm just going to go back into here and lift out some of the colour just to soften it. Where the clouds are. Now I want a little bit more shadow on the bottom of those clouds. So I'm just using a bit of raw sienna, magenta and cobalt blue and I'm just going to put a little bit more nice pinky pinky shadow on those clouds and I'm just letting that run into the wash. A bit more over here and I'll just take a bit of that up there just to add a little bit of drama to the sky while keeping it quite simple really. Just soften that. And now I'll just go back and just check my edges, make sure I'm quite happy with the way that looks. Now I want a bit more, I'm just making some adjustments now. As you do one bit you realise another bit needs adjusting. Because you've got to remember these colours dry an awful lot lighter. And I just think I'm just going to go up a bit more blue in here and let that run down. Just using the brush to dance around the page, as they say. To that a little bit just so it fuses and that will actually dry quite a bit lighter than it is there 
Right, so I'm going to leave the sky low now and let that dry. Okay, now I've got the sky in, I want to sort of start adding much warmer tone, much warmer tones of colour throughout the painting. Um, I don't want to be painting it all in individual little parts. I want to have a go at just sort of covering the whole painting in a wash, dropping in colours for the hull of the boat, and then going when that's dry, going back afterwards and tightening everything up. So what I'm going to do first is just mist my paper again just to help the paint flow a little bit and then I'm looking at my and I'm just going to get some of the warm colours on my palette first I've got some, and I've got some cool colours in this palette and I'm just going to start <coughs> And some cobalt blue. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. So I'm just going to start trying to work my way down the page, finding some, making sure I, I remember to clean my brush because if not, I'm going to muddy all the colours, and that's not a good idea. I don't mind the colours running together on the page. They're kind of doing their own thing, really. And well, that's okay. Oops. Now, now I'm going to start warming the colours up as I come down. making sure I leave any whites behind that I want to preserve. I don't want to be covering up all my whites. So carefully painting around the uh, parts of the boats that I want left, left white. Basically all that cottage can go in. little roof there that I want left white. In a minute we'll drop some colour in for those boats. I'm not going to worry too much about the accuracy of that. I'll get my darks in as well. <coughs> Keep the whole thing flowing. Right. And there's some water through here. I want to keep this water looking fresh and let that run into it so it looks. Again, I'm thinking about my white areas here I want to look after. Sienna, some cobalt blue and a little bit of cadmium yellow. Just this end of the key is quite green. It's going to drop some bluey brown in as well. 
to wash my brush out <clears throat> because in the heat of battle as you're getting all excited about getting everything down it's easy to start mudging the colours <clears throat> so try and be mindful of that finish your painting not so easy to do. I can't always talk when I'm doing this bit because it takes quite a lot of concentration. So you have to just kind of bear with me. Now as I'm coming forward to the foreground, I want to make the colours a little bit richer. It's crucial to paint around these boats and get this and preserve the highlights. I'm using my inch flat at the moment because that chisels around everything quite well. So I've quickly got this done, I can go back. I don't mind going over that boat because the hull of it's going to be quite dark, but the inside's going to be white. <coughs> this boat could be gone over a little bit. It's going to be quite grey. And it's not going to be the same with that one. We can pick the details out on that later. And this one. This is going to be a nice blue colour, this one. So we can drop that in to start with. This one's going to be a much and this one that's a bit dark maybe a red colour this one more of a burnt with some just to tone it down a bit So by doing it this way, we're getting quite a lot of information down in one wash. We're not, have, we're not going to be spending ages playing around. 
and they will run these colours but we can come back and tighten everything up later. Right now I just want to get some colour on these boats before the surrounding areas dry. Like that. To keep them nice and fresh. Actually I think I'll have that one a nice blue colour. It's a little darker. Again, but switch to a smaller brush and let's get some shadow colour mixed up. You soon run out of space in your palette when you're mixing lots of colours. So you've got to either stop and clean your palette which is a pain because then you lose your flow and the wash is dry or you've just got to kind of try and carry on. That's a bit what I'm going to do now. I should probably stop and clean my palette. But we'll see. So I'm just trying to lay some shadows in these boats because I want everything to fuse together. So it looks more natural. See that is a disaster what's happened there because I've gone and splashed some water on it. Now I've got to try and... not good. Just lift that out. Hopefully I can pull that back together again later. I'll have to try. Now I get a rigger brush. Mixing some ultramarine with some burnt sienna, and I'm just going to start drawing some detail. I want this to fuse with the paint, I don't want it to be hard lines on their own. back do some more work to those in a bit. And what I'm going to do now <coughs> is just let that dry and then come back and Start tightening everything up. It's nice to put some of these lines in while the other washers are still wet because, like I say, they, they, they run into the wet paint and you get some nice soft edges. Much, much looser looking painting. Right, we'll let that dry and come back in a minute. 